Oh no, almost identical. Mm, not really. Oh my God, what if you can't get it already? Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna do uh, what I'm calling a hall of fame, which is basically a hall of repurchases. These are not things that are brand new to me. These aren't necessarily even things that I've just recently repurchased. But after last week's boots haul and the makeup chat where I was talking about not really wanting new things all the time and finding it difficult to kind of reconcile the YouTube of it all with actually falling in love with some products and just continuing to repurchase them because I always feel like I have to be looking for something new and exciting to share with you or a dupe or an alternative but sometimes the products just work and I want to keep buying those. <laughs> The way I decided what would make it into this video was basically, number one, I had to have repurchased multiple times already, not just like this has been sent to me, but I had, at very least, I had to have repurchased items once. Because some of these things you wouldn't use very quickly, so it was kind of difficult to say, well, at least three times, there are a couple of like caveats, um, but they had to have been purchased by me. So, you know, some of this stuff maybe I was sent at some point. Uh, but I have to have repurchased each of these things at least twice myself with my own money. And I also wanted it to be things that I would still repurchase now because there are some things that I've bought again and again and again, but I've since found things that I like more and I maybe wouldn't buy them again now. So just kind of like, that's the level. And we'll start with makeup. It's quite a few makeup things actually. And then I've got some like body and skin and stuff afterwards. First are two foundations. I'm sure there are other foundations in here. I mean, even off the top of my head, It Cosmetics CC Cream, I have repurchased, probably would repurchase. But right now, if I was to run out of all of everything, I would go and repurchase these. I'm wearing this today. This is the number seven Stay Perfect foundation. I mentioned this in my recent haul. It was an old favorite that I have repurchased probably two or three times in the past anyway, but I just hadn't used it for ages. And with the Vegas Vow Renewal thing coming up, I was like, I'm gonna try something that maybe might stay a satin finish for longer than the foundation that I use all the time, which is the number seven Hydra Luminous. This is a beautiful foundation if you have got kind of texture or dryness, especially because I use a lot of active ingredients in my skincare. I can get kind of like flaky areas. I use tretinoin in my skin and me prescription. So although I've been through that purge phase, I don't always put it all over my face. Often I'll just kind of focus on the outer areas where I've got the most pigmentation. Sometimes I just go for it and put it all over. So I can get some flaking on the areas of my skin that are not used to that particular ingredient. So it's nice to have a foundation that I can lean on that's not going to exaggerate that. Everything's very kind of fresh and dewy and it looks very natural, but it evens everything out without sinking into all of the, you know, dry or any of the fine lines, that kind of thing. I love number seven specifically because they have a perfect shade match for me, which is Calico um, and Stay Perfect, which I'm wearing today. I think this is gonna be the winner. We're gonna talk about Vow Renewal makeup in a completely separate video. I'm gonna try and speed through these because it's quite a lot of products. Um, this won't be a surprise. I don't talk about this a ton, but Hourglass powders. I have tried other things from Hourglass. I don't think they're that fantastic. I think they should be able to just survive on these powders alone because they are really, really good. So this was um, actually bought for me, maybe for my 30th birthday, so some, quite some time ago, um, by my friends. This color here was Dim Light. This was obviously the one that I was using the most. I then repurchased the mini of Dim Light and used it all up. And then, now technically this is one of the caveats, I was given a voucher by Look Fantastic. I had free reign, I could spend it on whatever I wanted. I decided to get a full size powder and I was looking at the different ones thinking maybe Dim Light is, um, maybe there's another one that would be better for me. I wish I'd got the Dim Light because this is diffused light and it is, I don't think you can tell because there's not a lot left in here, but it is a very different tone. This is less sheeny as well. So I would still say Dim Light is my absolute favourite, but the, the diffused is exactly what they are. I'm, I'm wearing it today and it is just a diffuse light. Doesn't it just look like kind of soft focus sheen on my cheek? It's not shimmery. If you are very kind of averse to a highlighty highlight, a frosty, sparkly highlight, this is so flattering because it's very kind of light reflecting, kind of hides things and just soft focus. They're so expensive, but they last for ages. 
and they are really, really worth it. If you are going to spend a little bit more money on something special, I would say this is kind of, this is in my list of, it's nice to treat yourself. This, Nars Sex Appeal, I was saying to my husband the other day, I definitely, definitely want to take this with us, but because I've hit pan, I'm nervous that it could shatter in transit. I mean, it's stupid because I could obviously go and buy one while I was there, but I just don't want to risk it. So I think I'm going to buy another one before we go. I can still use this, but I just don't necessarily want to travel with one that's maybe a little bit precarious. This is the second one of these that I've purchased. It is such an unusual colour and I have recommended this time and time again on this channel. And I know for some people, they're just like, I don't get it. You can't really see it a lot on my cheeks, like in the daylight, I, I put this on and it's practically getting ready in the dark, but then I put on the lights and was like, oh, it's a bit much. But then in these lights, you can't see it so much. It's just, oh, it's like such a subtle blush. If I swatch it, I mean, you can barely see it on my finger there. You can barely even make it out. You really kind of had to build it up and build it up and build it up. And I feel like the more you work it into your skin, the kind of warmer it gets. But can you just see that, that little patch there kind of looks like it's glowing. It's not like a, a regular blush where, oh, you put it on and, you know, the placement and whatever. It's more of a, a flush and it's very natural. Very, very natural. It's my absolute all-time favourite blush. I'm very heavy-handed. And this just allows me to, like, I'll put a bit more on, a bit more on, and I'll build it up to just a very natural flush. I love it so much. So I'm definitely, I have repurchased this before, and I will be repurchasing it again very soon. While I was getting ready, I was trying to include as many of these items as possible so you could actually see them on my face. Um, and I wasn't going to do much with my eyes because I just didn't feel like I had very much that was, like, repurchased, repurchased. Um, but I decided to use this, I thought I'm gonna still do, because I'm still kind of playing with a particular look. Um, and then I remembered, I actually technically did have this before, so I can include this. I purchased this a few months ago. I said it was like, it felt like quite a splurge to me. And it's one of those things that I've had in and out of my boots cart for years. I'm like, oh, I really wanna buy it, but oh, is it too boring? I've got so many eyeshadow palettes. Do I really need it? And I think they did 20% off and I finally purchased it. Hand on heart, if you got rid of every other eyeshadow palette that I owned, I think I'd be fine with just this one. And I have a lot. Um, even like my beloved Urban Decay Smog, if I had to pick just one eyeshadow palette to live with for the rest of my life, it would be this. This is the Too Faced Naturalize. I actually had this when it was in the cardboard packaging, uh, which was a long, long time ago. I'm gonna do, I think like one week, one palette, you know, like old school with this, because I think there's so many looks that you can get from it, even though it's very, very neutral. It's awkward because it's so shiny. Um, but the top row is matte. That one down there is matte. And do you know what? As I'm looking at the palette, I'm realizing I've never even used this, which is incredible. So these are my favorites. These ones up here, I use this in this part. I kind of transition it into kind of like a smoky eye, but I would totally use that in this eye look if I, I it's almost like this had been invisible to me. Then these make a really gorgeous kind of nighttime smoky eye. And this color here, the, ch the chocolate martini color. Oh, everything's like sparkly but everything blends so beautifully. It's just, everything about it is just gorgeous. I'm gonna do a whole video on it because it's like a, a love letter to an eyeshadow palette. So technically I have had this before. That is probably why I felt so much, I fact, I think I probably did a video about this um, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. That's probably why I felt so, for so long, like, oh, you can't buy it, you can't, don't buy it, it's gonna be a waste of money. I'm so glad that I did because Too Faced eyeshadows are some of the absolute best. They're up there with Urban Decay. And this, I mean, it does smell like chocolate, that might not be for you, but it is a really fantastic staple. I also have this eye pencil, this eyebrow pencil. I've had maybe three or four of these. Um, the shade is taupe. Now, I mentioned this again in the haul, but it is, like, it, it's not like a taupe, like a grey taupe, because I've had taupe eyeshadow pencils before that have been kind of on the cooler side. I think it's neutral, maybe leaning to warm, because I don't think, if you were looking for, like, a, a taupe because your hair was grey, I don't think this is the right taupe for you, because I've had, <laughs> when I had very, very icy blonde hair, taupe worked really well for me because it was kind of, it leaned grey. This taupe is leaning warm. Just telling you because if you're kind of on the ashier side, this might not be for you. 
This pencil is fantastic. It's very, very dry in texture, which is what I like. So again, heavy handed, I can kind of do, build it up with brush strokes. I've been a little bit heavier with them today. And then on the other end, obviously you've got the little spoolie, which is great for me because my eyebrows, they just like to grow down. I don't know what it's all about. Um, but yeah, a real basic one. I was actually talking to someone the other day. They messaged me about the Lash Sensational mascara. And um, I'm hope, I hope she doesn't mind me mentioning. Um, and she was saying, did I have another one that I liked as much that I could recommend? Because she really kind of resented purchasing the same mascara over and over again. She and her daughter kept trying to find one that they liked as much. And it was just like a waste of money and yada, yada. And I said, I think... The thing is, we are kind of conditioned to want the newness all of the time. And once you found something that works, this would be a great example. I'm not excited about repurchasing this pencil. It's not an exciting, oh, I'm really excited for this to arrive. I'm really excited to go to Boots and buy this thing. It's annoying that I have to go and buy it again. It's annoying that I have to spend money on something that I use every day. And it's not exciting because it's not new. I've had this in my stash for months if not years. Same with this, it's definitely been years. This has been my absolute favorite mascara, the Lash Sensational. Also absolutely loved the primer, which is now discontinued, which is unacceptable because it meant, with, with the primer, it meant that I could use the primer with a ton of other mascaras and they kind of work the same as the Lash Sensational. Now, you have taken that away from me, Maybelline, but these two together were like ultimate lashes for me. Um, it is annoying to have to repurchase. It's just, you start to resent a repurchase of something that you've used for a very, very long time. And it is kind of like having to buy shampoo. You're like, ah. And so most of us want to switch it up. I can't think of the last time I bought the same shampoo twice on the bounce because we don't have, I don't want to just go and buy the same thing. We get bored. But when something works, especially like mascara, foundation, that kind of thing, we must all collectively waste so much money looking to get that kind of dopamine hit of excitement from something being new when in fact we've already got the thing that works for us and we should just stick with that. Last makeup product, I do have a couple of brushes, but last makeup product is the Dior Lip Maximizer. I have talked about dupes. I've, I, this is a great example. I have gone to great lengths to try so many different products to try and find you a dupe for this. Do you know what? It doesn't exist. The closest, this from Maybelline. So if I swatch them next to each other, they look nearly exactly the same. Um, almost identical. Not really, not really exactly the same, but this is the Maybelline and this is the Lip Maximizer. Uh, and the Lip Maximizer, the shade that I have is 006. I don't know if this is available all the time. I can never find it online, but it's 006. And the one I have in uh, Maybelline is, it's the Lip Lifter Gloss. And um, this is Ice. So in theory, these two products are similar. But I think you can kind of see that the, the Maybelline one is thicker. It's a more glossy gloss. Even though this is so glossy, it's thinner. It's thinner. There's no stickiness whatsoever. There's not really any stickiness with the Maybelline, but it's definitely thicker. Um. And I had kind of convinced myself, I pulled this out because I still would repurchase it, just because it's an experience. You, when you have something more expensive, especially a lip product, it, you're not really only buying the product. Because if I found you a dupe that was like in really ugly packaging, you wouldn't be as excited, again, we're looking for the, ooh, uh, ooh. You wouldn't be as excited pulling it out of your bag and reapplying it when you're out, or just like, you know, you don't have to be around people, but you just get that kind of excitement when you've got, like, these are some of the products that I don't mind spending money on. Things that really do something different and things that I like to keep in my handbag as little gems, little kind of jewels in my handbag. I really resent having to spend a lot of money on mascara and foundation because they're so basic. And if I can find something that, that does that job, this is just like, these are base layers for me. I don't mind spending money on something like the beautiful luminous highlighters from Hourglass because they're just, they just, they do something special. That's like an external glow. It really does make a difference. I don't mind spending money on really blendable eyeshadow because my experience of applying it is so much nicer. It just feels 
worthwhile and I don't mind spending money on lip products. I would say over the years, that's probably what I've spent the most on in terms of high-end beauty is lip products because they're things that I'm excited about. I'm excited to pull them out every time I use them. I'll go to my like wardrobe of lip colors and pull something out and I love the packaging, everything about it. And so part of why I would repurchase that is the experience of a high-end lip product. I really enjoy this. I love the packaging, everything about it. I like it in my bag, everything. However, I had kind of convinced myself that this Maybelline was a dupe and it was basically exactly the same thing. I haven't used this for a while. I pulled it out for this video. I am wearing it. It is different. It is still tingling now. I probably put it on 20 minutes ago. I can still feel that like plumping tingle, whether that's doing anything or not. I can feel it, which makes me kind of feel, feels fresh. It feels like I've got fuller lips while I'm wearing it whether that's actually true or not, it doesn't matter. And the gloss, it's super high shine, but like I said before, very, very thin. It's very lightweight, but still gives you that real gleam. I do think this is better than this, whether or not it's that much more money worth, probably not. But I will continue to repurchase it for as often as I actually use it, and for as long as it actually lasts me, it's worth it to me. Some things are just special little things. Um, right, a couple of brushes that I have had at least three versions of. These are from Real Techniques. Uh, one is the blush brush. This is what I applied my blush with today. I just kind of slightly, slightly, slightly built it up. It's just such a gorgeous brush for so many different powders. Um, very kind of airbrushy. And then this I apply um, powder with. So I'll just kind of under my eyes, like that again under my eyes and either side of my nose where my pores the most visible I'll go down my nose chin and then this bit because I have a line in between my eyebrows and I have a line there and a line there so I'll go kind of do a cross on my head and that blurs out all of the texture and lines that I want to blur out without being kind of caked in powder so I don't have powder all over my face I just have it in select areas, and that's what I use this brush for. It's called the setting brush, and so that leads me to believe I'm using it correctly. I'm gonna have to take this off because it's actually getting warm. This in between, oh, I forgot I had lip gloss on my hand. This in between weather, it's like what season is it right now? Moving on to Bath and Body, ooh, I do have one last product. <laughs> um, I feel like those of you who watch like enough of my videos will be like, I can't believe you didn't mention. I have multiple of these just in my drawer right now. Morphe Continuous Setting Mist, the gold one is just because it was a Christmas one and I got it in the sale. Um, if you've never seen this, I mean, where have you even been? Is that the best mist action you've ever seen in your life? It is, it is. It's absolutely fantastic. If you've over powdered, that is your savior. If you are gonna do something really heavy and then you put that on, it melts everything into your skin. Your skin just looks absolutely incredible. It is not necessarily there for the longevity of your makeup, but it is there for how it looks immediately. Like, wow, you know, sometimes when you'll do a too heavy or too powdery makeup look and you know it's gonna look better in like 45 minutes to an hour once you've kind of become a bit oily. I'm speaking specifically to a certain kind of skin of person. Um, that's what it gives you straight away. It just makes it just makes everything look like skin. So if you if you're kind of having like a bad makeup morning and it's just not that that will save everything. I'm only including Bath and Body or rather like Body and Skin that I have on hand. There's so many things that I have repurchased so many times and I would repurchase, but there's, it's just so many, so many. I could do a video just on this stuff alone. So I figure I'm just gonna show you the stuff I've got on hand. And then as we go through, cause I know there'll be different beauty products that I've forgotten. And I know there'll be other body and skincare products that maybe I don't have right now, but I will probably repurchase again in the future. I'll probably revisit this topic and we'll we'll go over those then. First, I've got a little category of its own, which is nails. Um, sesh feet. If you've never used sesh feet, I mean, you must have. If you've never used it, it's fantastic. Um, it is the ultimate top coat. Now I have my nails done now. So you might think this is crazy. Also, what do we think? I had them done. These are like tester nails for Vegas. So one is like a lot. And one we've done kind of different things on different nails, the Royal Way. Um, just to kind of see which I prefer. But I've done like the, I've chosen the, the four point stars because it feels Vegasy. So, you know, you can weigh in. What do you think? More, less, 
which of the nails do we prefer? I continue to buy Sesh Feet for my toes because it makes uh, the nail super glossy, which makes it look like gel, but also it makes the um, manicure or pedicure last so much longer. If you do your own nails, you need this. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole thing. You absolutely need this. Um, you do need to be careful to go over your entire nail and cap it. I would imagine anyone that paints their own nails understands the whole thing, but because of the kind of nail polish that it is, it kind of shrinks, but it hardens. I'd say the, the best part of it is that your nails don't need to be 100% dry. You know, like if you're painting your nails and, um, cause I, I used to hate the time it took to paint my nails. Um, and then they would just chip straight away because I'm like a nails as tools kind of person. But if you are painting your nails, you can wait till they're kind of touch dry. You can use this and something in this, I remember reading a review or either something from, this is from years ago, but it kind of stuck in my mind. Something in this product kind of permeates through the layers of the nail polish and kind of like hardens it all together. Whether that's true, whether I've made it up, whether or not that was just an exaggeration, I don't know, but it works. That's what it does. And it dries so fast. So super, super glossy. You don't have to wait until your nails are 100% dry like you do with normal top coats. And it dries super, super fast. You need it in your life. You can get it from Amazon. I have it on um, the thing, what's it called? Where it just comes to you like once every three months. I also have this on that as well. This is the Jessica Phenomen Oil. Mine, because it's been in the sunshine, has got a weird colour. I'm sure this was clear when it arrived. Um, this... I've had maybe three of these now. And especially when you have gel or acrylic nails, I really didn't think that it would make a, all that much difference. And I was complaining all the time. I just put a little tiny bit on each of them. I was complaining all the time to my nail tech that my uh, nails were lifting or that they were kind of like separating. Some weird stuff was happening. And she said, I have been telling you for years, you need to use nail oil, like cuticle oil. I just didn't think it was really, like, is this just another thing? She wasn't personally selling it to me. She was telling me which one to buy on Amazon. Um, so it's not like I felt like she was, you know, trying to sell me a product or anything, but I just thought, is this real? Do we really need? Yes, it makes so much difference. I used to get so much, like, flakiness, and I still do when I don't use this, but so much flakiness, so many, like, um, little bits of skin that would come away. It was really sore. And obviously my gels and my acrylics were actually lifting and they weren't lasting as long. 100%, this is worth it. If you invest in having your nails done, you should be investing in a, a cuticle oil as well. But if you've got very dry nails like I did, I think it's worth it even if you do your own nails. This is an odd one, but the witch, uh, sorry, the tea tree and witch hazel back and body spray from Boots. Oh no. Okay, so usually this spray, I was like, I have a bad feeling. Yeah, thankfully I have other ones of exactly this that I can decamp this into because something has gone awry or I'll just swap out the top. Um, I hate when that happens. It's my least favourite. So when it's actually working and the little spritzer hasn't gone completely wrong, um, it's a really, really nice spritz. It smells amazing of tea tree, which I'm really into. If you're not into tea tree, it smells exactly like tea tree. You're going to hate it. Um, but I spritz it all over my body. So my chest, my arms, my back, everywhere, because it helps to um, keep kind of pimples and any acne at bay. I had acne on my chest, my arms, and my back all growing up. And I had um, a really hard time getting rid of it all. I would say probably it was pregnancy that cleared it up. Not recommending that to teenagers out there, but I think that was basically what fixed it for me. I didn't really have it on my face, but I got it all over the rest of my body. And so I'm very conscious of that now. I also put a glycolic acid in a spray bottle to do the same thing, but this on kind of like on a nightly basis, spritz myself when I get out of the shower or in the morning when I get out of the shower, whenever it might be. And then I moisturize or do whatever once it's all kind of absorbed and dried down. I am absolutely convinced it helps to keep everything kind of smooth and clear. Something I'm trying to get into the habit of but I haven't used for about a week and a half, is this. I've got like four more of these in my drawer. The Dove Dermaspa Summer Revived. In fact, I just gave one to Ella because I think it is foolproof fake tan. A couple of applications of this, and that is exactly how tan I want to be. I 
I've done so many videos um, testing fake tans and it's all fun and games and I do want to do those videos to test them for you guys but truthfully I'm not really looking to be like oh my god you've been on a holiday for a week overnight. I prefer a gradual tan but I kind of prefer the tan I get from a gradual tan like two days in rather than you know like using it every day for a week. So I will probably use this um, like let's say I use it on a Sunday night, I'll use it on a Monday night and then I won't use it again for another week. That's exactly the level that I want. I use fair to medium, which is really subtle um, and it's almost foolproof. I never get that crazy like orange patches. I never get it like on my knees or on my elbows or very rarely. Um, I don't find that it's really obvious that I've washed my hands off afterwards and I've got like white hands and like orange arms. Any potential problems that I've got with it are so insignificant because it's just a hint of colour and it's very very nice as an actual moisturiser as well because it is Dove that is a body care um, brand and the actual moisturiser feels really hydrating. It does have the fake tan smell though, everything does, everything does. Um, another moisturiser that I really like is the Vaseline Intensive Care Cocoa Radiant, I've bought this countless times. This is not really a moisturiser so much as a gel oil and it is the thickest, stickiest, the thickiest gel. Um, or like oil, it's it's a real kind of texture, really good for massage um, if you want kind of a little bit of pushback, what do I mean, like friction? Um, but it really stays on the skin. So again, straight out of the shower, put that on and you're going to have that kind of residual oil. Also really nice on your legs. You know, if you're looking for kind of like a sheen, if you're wearing um, a dress or something, really nice and it smells amazing. I've just almost finished another one of these Skin and Me hydrating cleansers. I'm not gonna get another one purely because I wanna try some different things, but I would repurchase this. I don't know if I can get only the cleanser if I have to get the cleanser and the moisturizer because I'm quite keen on other moisturizers that I use. Um, and I decided to test out the other service from Skin and Me where they send you the cleanser and moisturizer once every three months. And I really, really like the cleanser. I really do. It's creamy, but it's kind of thick. I'll show you what it looks like. It's thick enough that I feel like I can really rub it into my skin and then I flannel it off or just rinse it off. It's like this, but it's not like a thick Liz Oil thick. It's more of a lotion thick. I don't even know how I can describe it. Do you see what I mean? It's just kind of more like a, a thicker cream rather than that like really hot cloth cleanser kind of thick. Um, I really enjoy this, uh, but I think I'm going to um, cancel it from my next one just because I want to try different things. But I know for a fact I will use this again. I don't know what that smell is because I think it's an amalgamation of the, the things that were underneath it. And one of those is the um, Too Faced Cocoa. That smells really funky now because I'm pretty sure that cleanser has no scent at all. Lastly, I repurchased this very recently, a massive tub of it. Um, this also works really well as a cleanser if you're not too sensitive to like very heavy things, you know, if, if you're not acne prone, I don't know how it would work for you. But for me, no problem at all using this on my face as a cleanser. Um, but it's a really thick cream that I like for uh, winter time for my body and for my feet. I, uh, because I work from home now, later on I'll be logging on for work because I'm working late today and I'm gonna um, soak my feet for a little bit, buff them, and then when I log on for work, I'm gonna just put a ton of this stuff on my feet, put my feet up on a chair underneath my desk and I'm gonna be working along while my feet are just kind of pedicuring themselves in an enormous thick mask of Nivea. I would also use that on my face if my face was particularly dry, if I felt like I needed a little bit of extra something over the winter time when it gets really, really cold. Um, another thing that I was really enjoying last year was Astral. Really, really similar product. That's not as thick as the Nivea. Um, but some of these products, like, they're still in business. They're still selling them for a reason. People are still purchasing them. I know that that's not always the best endorsement, but that's been around for a really, really long time for a reason. And although I like certain ingredients in my skincare, sometimes the moisturizer, the final step, I just like it to be a really heavy layer of something to lock in all the other stuff that I've put on my face. And that is it. I feel like I've been talking for three hours. So I'm sorry if that was really, really long, uh, but I wanted to um, put it out because I've been chatting with so many of you since I made those videos last week. And it seemed to be the kind of thing that you would wanna see, kind of a haul of favorites, a haul of things that I would repurchase, have repurchased. Some of these things are repurchases within the last month. Um, 
So 100%, any of these things I would definitely repurchase again. Some of them I will be repurchasing in the not too distant future and all of them are recommendations. I will try my best to get everything linked for you below. I know I do have a tendency to recommend things that have been discontinued, so I apologise in advance if that's the case. Uh, and any, any of you that love these things as well, I'd love to know. And please tell me I'm not the only person that loves NARS Sex Appeal because if I am, I'm going to stock up now because I'll have a really terrible feeling. Oh my god, what if you can't get it already? Crisis averted. It's still available. It's still available. Okay, I'm definitely going to repurchase that again today, just in case. Just in case, because I've definitely jinxed myself now. Uh, but yeah, I really want to know, how, is this, have you just got to be really fair, maybe? Because I'm not that fair. I think if, you, if I was fairer still, then you would really be able to tell. But on me, it's kind of just a glow. I love it. I really love it so much. But I understand anyone that's got any like skin deeper than me at all, it's just not going to work. And you need to know that you need to build it up. It's not going to give you a lot of colour. It's just kind of a pinched lip from within, which I love so much. Um, I hope you enjoyed this format. If you did, let me know. And I will definitely pull together some um, other things for uh, a follow-up because I know there are other things that I haven't included that as soon as I've edited this video, I'll be like, ah, oh, it was in my handbag the whole time. Um, also, if there's anything that you noticed that I've left off, I'm always interested whenever I do kind of like an ultimate favourites. Um, there's always people that are like, I can't believe you didn't mention this. And um, I usually can't believe it either.